Hey everyone, uh, I just wanted to make this video to throw something out there for everyone and hopefully get some feedback on this um, because um, I'm not presenting this as some kind of um, definitive theory or something that I'm necessarily pushing or, or, or saying that I've uh, embraced personally, but it's just something that kind of wanting to explore a little more. I just find it a little, a little curious and very interesting. Um, something I've kind of thought about randomly uh, over, I don't know, a few months, but recently started thinking about it um, quite a bit more. Um, kind of came about because I, I decided a few days ago to just go back and start reading through the Book of Enoch, you know, from beginning to end, and and just kind of see what stuff might pop out at me. And um, as I was doing that, um, the thing that did start popping out at me was how many times, um, you know, it talks about where how Enoch basically is being taken all around the the earth and shown the all these things and yeah, the 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 luminaries and the, the portals and the firmament and all the stuff. Um, and at some point, he's taken to various ends of the earth, right? He goes, I believe, he goes to the the eastern edge and then the northern edge and then the the western edge which is which is pretty curious i mean he specifically described seeing where the firmament meets the earth and there's like where these these gates where the the stars come out and um also uh talks about like portals for the winds right so you see you see the the four directions being um basically it's, it's really hard to read the book of Enoch and not come away from it having to admit that what it's describing is that the, the cardinal directions, you know, what we call the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, um, is the, the, these are basically describing ultimate, you know, terminus points on each four, you know, corners or ends of the, the flat, the flat world. Um, as opposed to, you know, the concept that I think most people, most of us who are um, in this flat earth, you know, we're building flat earth models and things where, you know, we typically just kind of, it's like the AE, uh, the, the AE projection map where the north is the north pole, you know, and so we, we keep that from the globe model, and then the south is just the whole outer ring, and then east and west, you know, are just basically opposing directions going around the disk, right? So the only, the only one of those four that has a, an actual specific, you know, end point would be the, the northern pole underneath the Polaris, right? So the other, the other three are really just, um, they're just relative to that, okay? So... It's interesting to to ponder this idea because you know when we think about how much how much the heliocentric model has skewed other things like you know the size and distance of the sun moon and stars and and you know that what the shape of all the continents are and everything various distances especially as you get towards the outer outer parts you know if if it can just distort all those things that much then it is really curious to consider the idea that the way that we even reckon things like north, south, east, and west, are, are we really making just another assumption and attributing those things in terms of this, just basically all around the pole, the pole star, right? And I'm not saying that I don't think that there is a, that there, that there is a pole and that all the stars and sun, moon, you know, circumnavigate around it and that there's obviously a magnetic pole and all that. But what I'm saying is that as I started to, you know, just read through Enoch, thinking about this specific issue, and then also thinking about a lot of various points in the Bible, too, which seem to kind of leave it, you know, it's not really terribly specific. And, um, you know, you, you never actually hear that I can think of where the north, where the direction of north is specifically tied to the North Star, and obviously they knew about the North Star and used it for navigation and all that. But 
there are places in the Bible too where it seems like you know east and west are being more referred to as you know specific endpoint you know ends of the of the world ends of the map instead of just you know relative directions to each other and relative to that north point in the middle um and now this is interesting too because as i was thinking about this i started reading more online and um just even right here on wikipedia um under the the Another article for Cardinal Directions. There's a subheading for Cardinal Cardinal Directions in World Cultures. Okay, and it actually says this: it says many cultures not descended from European traditions use cardinal directions, but have a number other than four. Typically, a centered direction is added for a total of five. Isn't that interesting? Now, rather than the Western use of direction letters, properties such as colors are often associated with the various cardinal directions. These are typically the natural colors of human perception rather than primary colors. Some examples are shown here. Many regions of the world, prevalent winds change direction seasonally, and consequently many cultures associate specific named winds with cardinal and intercardinal directions. The classical Greeks personified these winds as eno uh, animoi, and then it goes on. So, isn't that crazy that, like, this all, the, the concept of a center direction because it also and the interesting thing too is that the more you look at it the more, like in Enoch it, it definitely um, definitely seems to present these four four cardinal directions uh, as being very interconnected with these four winds right it talks about the, the um, houses of the winds or storehouses of the winds as well as you know in Enoch there's there's angels that are basically um, kind of in charge over all sorts of things and you know equating that with the luminaries and such and then there's the angels of the winds and even the Bible talks about the angels of the four winds and so you see all these sort of overlapping um, terms and concepts that seem to be used very interconnectedly and um, and I don't know in Part of me wonders if that's maybe also what is being seen when we look in the book of uh, Ezekiel, when he sees these four just amazing creatures with the four faces and the wheels within the wheels, and they have all the touching wings and and all that. And it, you know, when you read that in the King James, it's, they're they're absolutely underneath the firmament, and God's throne is above the firmament there in Ezekiel. So that's definitely another um, portion of the scripture that's indicative of this enclosed cosmology so i don't know if those are also maybe just a, another depiction of those angels of the four winds but either way i just find this a very intriguing concept because you know do, do we even know for is maybe it doesn't really matter in terms of um the modern you know the present day uh, issue of proving you know whether proving the, the flat earth or, or anything like that but i think it this is more something that i guess would pertain to looking at all through the lens of of ancient texts and um you know ancient histories and and kind of trying to piece together how how this big shift um this big copernican shift and and so yeah it, it should definitely be mentioned that you know once you start looking into the this issue of the cardinal points and the cardinal directions it absolutely bleeds into all kinds of um esoteric and occult um teachings and uh symbolism and things like that and you know it can be quite a quite a crazy rabbit hole to uh you know to start diving into and i'm not and please understand that that's not what i'm advocating here or even wanting to to, to really emphasize here but but at the same time it would make sense because just like everything else whether it's the sun moon stars and the angels and the you know everything everything that might actually exist within the creation um obviously there's there's always a you know a, a twisted occult you know perversion of those truths and you know so satan takes everything and flips them inside out and upside down and um, turns them into yet some other you know mystery school teaching or you know deep secret knowledge to try and um, snare people with and confuse them from from the truth and from pointing back to God so please understand that I fully recognize you know that 
that sort of delineation there, and that's not what I'm trying to, uh, you know, dabble in or anything. But I'm saying, if, we, if we're going back to whatever that original, you know, if the Bible and Enoch really are using this concept of north, south, east, and west as, you know, terminal ends, possibly connected with terminal, you know, gates of the winds and angels of those winds and, and, and all these things kind of in conjunction with one another, then it would make sense that there would be um, a fallen angel, you know, doctrines of demons that come along later to uh, to obscure that and pervert it and, and all that. So yeah, I'm not, because yeah, you, if you start searching for this stuff, you'll you start finding all kinds of things in terms of Kabbalah and New Age teachings and, you know, and I, who knows, because when you get into, the, this is something that had always kind of puzzled me, like learning about um, New World Order and the occult and all the, the symbolism and, and layers of meanings and things, and um, from time to time you I would come across sort of weird, um, you, it's called the compass rose, you, I'm sure you've all seen it, and um, why, you know, I never could understand why the compass rose would, would it all be like employed as uh, like what that was all about in terms of its occult meaning, and yet it was always, it was, you know, it just pops up, and so now it would, it would actually make a lot more sense that if that was actually sort of, if there was like a core nugget of cosmological truth to it, right, about the nature of, of the earth and the, because obviously we're talking about, you know, physical realities kind of conjoining with uh, spiritual realities and the, the heavenly realms and how it's all kind of interconnected, right? I mean, that stuff is, any anything like that is, you know, doesn't matter whether you're talking about Jacob's Ladder or or what heaven is, you know, there's always an occult perversion of, of, of everything. So, so yeah, you, you find this all over the place and it makes you think about, you know, what about the, the Maltese, I guess it's the Maltese cross or the, the Templar cross, you know, the, the one we've all seen associated with the, the Knights Templar and Celtic crosses and, you know, where it's just four equal points and even things like the swastika or, um, just all kinds of mandalas and you know you see these you you see this basic sort of idea of four quadrants four points four directions all over the place and all kinds of cultures and all kinds of shamanic traditions and and um different different things so you know it obviously there's got to be something that is being sort of played off of there and you know, this this to me, like I said, would make a lot of sense if if this was really just the core idea that Satan was using to, you know, turn into just another little offshoot of his labyrinth of of occult deception. So yeah, I'm curious what you think because obviously it would affect what I was thinking about too is that if you know if we if basically we're superimposing sort of a a carryover of heliocentric, you know, reconfiguring in terms of the, the cardinal, the directions, right? If we're just superimposing that onto a flat earth map and calling the North Pole North rather than this like fifth center directional concept, then like from a biblical standpoint, that could actually um, affect things like the way we interpret various, you know, biblical prophecies that have yet to be fulfilled. Like, you know, for generations, people have been debating over things like I believe it's in Daniel where it talks about the king of the north and the king of the south and things like this. And if we if we perhaps have a skewed concept of what north and south are, then that's going to affect things like that and who knows what other kinds of things. So yeah, I'm just throwing this out there. Just curious what you guys think. If it's just if you think it's silly, then that's fine. You know, I'm just I'm just came across it, wanted to share it and um you know, have a conversation about it because I find it interesting. All right. Thanks.